Good morning, God's people. This is Sunday, December the 24th. This is Christmas Eve, and this is the time we have taken together to worship the Lord our God. And uh, this morning, the psalmist called to worship is from Psalm 89 and verse 1. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth, I will make your faithfulness known through all generation. This is, uh, this is God's word to us this morning as we prepare our hearts to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We would like you to turn to the book of Philippians and Philippians chapter 2. In Philippians chapter 2, we will be reading verse 1 to 11. Please turn to God's word in Philippians chapter 2. We will be reading verse 1 to 11. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only into your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in a very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of our servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, he became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the heaven, under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is God, God's words to us this morning. Let us go to the Lord in prayer this morning as we worship the King of kings and Lord of lords and celebrate him and celebrate his coming into our world. Shall we pray together? Creator God, do something mighty in us today. Stir our souls, challenge our thinking, affect change that we may go forth to love and serve one another as Jesus Christ our Savior has taught us to do. It is Christmas everywhere in, in our country and, and in the world, Heavenly Father. For weeks we have heard the songs and carols of the season sung the hymns and listen to the atoms exalting the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Over and over we have been reminded of the swift passage of time as we approach that day of days celebrating the occasion when Jesus Christ was born. In the midst of such prolonged emphasis we often grow weary of the music jaded with the preparations and tired of the season before it even have completed. Yet when we pause and meditate on the meaning of the coming of the Lord and try to understand something of your purpose for Christmas, 
we are filled again with amazement and wonder. During these remaining days of concentrated celebration, when so many are afraid and weary, bring us again to the remembrance of your gift to us and its meaning for all mankind. Restore unto us the joy of your salvation and renew our right spirit within us. Remembering again the deep meaning for the season, we will declare your ways to transgressors and sinners will be converted unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we prayed, who have taught us to pray. Our Father, what in heaven, our Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God's word to us this morning, as I said, is from the book of Philippians. And uh, this is a word of excitement. This is a word of amazement. The title of God's word to us this morning is that... Uh, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, our incomprehensible humility, the incarnation of Jesus Christ our Lord. This morning we want to consider such greatness because the Lord Jesus Christ has taught us that greatness, greatness, come with humility. Humility really is God's path to true greatness in this world. Christ, Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, perfectly exemplified what this is all mean. Our passage really introduces us to this word of mind, let the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's talk about mind as we introduce this whole subject to us this morning because what Jesus appealed for you and I to do is to have our mind be like his mind. There are many who are battling for our mind in this world. As soon as we open our eyes and we are awake, there is a battle within us for our mind. There are those who want the control of our mind. Because if someone takes control of our mind, that person has us. Yes, the question we want to ask this morning about the mind is that... Uh, uh, has anything around you, anything in this in this world at all, has blown up your mind? I want to talk about a story this morning uh, of Christmas, and I really want the attention of your mind, and I want it to blow up your mind. The Lord Jesus Christ, His humility must and should indeed blow up our mind. Have this attitude in yourselves which was also in Christ Jesus. This word attitude can also be changed for the word mind. Have this mind in yourself which was also in the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 5 told us who, although he existed in form of God, did not regard 
equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a born servant and being made in the likeness of man. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For now, we're going to forget, just skip over verse 5 a little bit. We will come back to it after we look at verse 6 to 8. And those, we, we will see what attitude, what attitude Jesus had so that we can purposely have the same attitude. Remember I said, please also substitute the word attitude with me this morning for the word mind. Let your mind, let your mind be in line with that of the Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. The, the, this passage is the most important and often cited passage in Christology. The academic study of the Christ in the Bible. So we'll take a few moments to examine three key words that give us a better understanding of exactly what happened when God became a man. The incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ. The word form in verse 6 that Paul used is the Greek word morphe which stress it stresses the inner essence of reality not merely the outward appearance it is saying that Jesus was divine the word grasp is another one is from the Greek word hamapos hamagamos and it refers to something highly precise to be held fast or retained. Jesus did not hold on to his rightful position along with his accompanying rights of deity over his creation. Then we have the word emptying of himself is referred to in the theological terms as his kinosis from the Greek word kinu, which not surprisingly mean to make empty or to lay aside, just like snakes do. Snakes, every once in a while, will lay aside the garment or the skin that they carry. Oh, though Jesus became a hundred percent human, he remained a hundred percent God also. Many verses make it clear to us, abundantly clear, that this emptying of himself does not mean that Jesus in uh, in any way stopped being God a snake who changed his kin still remain a snake in John chapter 14 and verse 9 he who has seen me Jesus say, has seen the father in John chapter 10 and verse 30 I and the Father, we are one. In John 8, verse 58, Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. Or since Jesus continued being fully God, the question is, of what did Jesus really empty himself? I would like to share with you a list of five things that I think that Jesus really emptied himself of. One, number one, he emptied himself of his heavenly glory. He who was with the Father at creation. When they say, let us 
make men in our image the one who was a creation and who was the creator of everything had come into the world by emptying himself he has left his glory he showed this only brief to Peter, James, and John on the Mount of Transfiguration. The glory that he has had with the Heavenly Father from the world because of his great love for mankind when he came the first Christmas, Jesus emptied himself of his glory. The secondly, he emptied himself of his independent authority. He submitted himself completely to the will of his Father. For the sake of saving the world, for his love for the world, the Lord Jesus Christ emptied himself of his own independent authority. He emptied himself, thirdly, of his divine prerogatives. He didn't display his divine attributes and submitted himself to the spirit direction. He emptied himself of his divine prerogatives. The Lord Jesus Christ, fourthly, emptied himself of his eternal riches. Everything that God has had for him and has given him, he has emptied himself of them so that he could become one of us. And that is mind blowing. While on earth he was poor and owned very little. This is the Jesus of Nazareth that whose birthday you and I celebrating uh, today and tomorrow. He favorable relationship with the Father. He has given that up. On the cross, his fellowship with the Father was broken and he's and he experienced the Father's full wrath. Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Jesus said on the cross. Now let, let us go to bar, back to verse 5 that we have skipped from the beginning of the message this morning. What does verse 5 said? Verse 5 now is a mind blowing verse have this attitude or this mind in yourself which was also in the Lord Jesus Christ we are called here by Paul to have the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ when it comes to emptying ourselves to the humility of the Lord Jesus Christ. There hasn't many things in this world that impress us as much as the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who was God, who was the creator of this universe become a created a created being he became one of us yes paul is citing jesus as the perfect example of humility but his main point is that we need to humble ourselves just like jesus christ humbled himself so that he could save mankind so that we could have christmas we are to study closely the, hum, the, the incredibly humble attitude that Jesus demonstrated in his incarnation. And then we are to emulate that attitude in our own lives. This is the challenge of Christmas 2023. The more clearly we understand all that Jesus did for us, 
the more motivated we will be to humble ourselves as he did. Just as the Lord Jesus Christ did. The verse tells us that Jesus did not even consider equality with God, although he was God. The verse told us that he took upon himself the form of a human being. Yes, Jesus Christ, incarnation is a mind, it's a mind bubbling type of concept that the holy taking part with the unholy the holy come to dwell in matter yes Jesus Christ is the great example great example of humility Christmas is all about humility and humbling ourselves. When we are called this Christmas by Paul, let that mind of humility that was in Christ Jesus our Lord be also in you this Christmas. To humble ourselves. What was the end result of this great act of the Lord Jesus Christ. Or oh, the verse 9 tells us the exaltation is humility's reward. For this reason also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Verse 9 says, for this reason, for this mind bubbling, for this concept that really blows our mind and has blown the mind of the world that makes Jesus so unique and so different from anyone, any other religion in the world. For this reason, and the reason is that Jesus humbled himself absolutely, submitting fully to the Father's plan because he did this because Jesus did this, God highly exalted him to the very highest position. All creation must one day bow before him in worship, acknowledging his lordship. Everyone actually has two opportunities to bow the knee to Jesus and worship him as king of kings and lord of lords. The first opportunity is during our earthly life. We cannot acknowledge that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Repent of our sins. Trust him to save us and commit to living our lives in submission to his lordship. Many in this, oh, in this video who are listening to me this morning have already bowed the knee to Jesus and acknowledge that Jesus is Lord of their lives. Have you? Have you? Are you in that number? The second opportunity will be at a, a day in the future called the great white throne judgment description that the book of Revelation give us in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 11 then I saw a great white throne and him who sat upon it from whose presence earth and heaven fled away 
and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. It is on this day of judgment that every atheist, every agnostic, every Hindu, every Muslim, every Buddhist, or liberal, moderate, or conservative, every terrorist, every socialist, every communist, and every capitalist, and every peasant, billionaire, ignorant scholar, indeed every single unbeliever who has ever lived will be forced to bow down to King Jesus and confess that he is Lord in heaven and on earth. Then all these who have waited till the great white throne judgment to acknowledge his lordship will be forever banished to hell. In Revelation chapter 20 and verse 15, And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Friends, don't wait till this firing day of judgment to acknowledge Jesus as Lord of your life. Don't put it off. Don't spend another Christmas without knowing the Jesus of the Christmas. I implore you to repent of your sin today, to trust him to save you and to submit to his lordship over your life. So this is how after the son's humble submission, the father exalts. But this same principle amplified in Jesus' life of humbling oneself and later being exalted by God applied to every one believer as well. Oh yes, the believers will suffer here for a while. But wait, the day of exaltation will come. In Psalm 75 and verse 6, For not from the east nor from the west nor from the desert comes exaltation. But God is the judge. He put down one and he exalts another. Christian is not your boss or your test scores or you are or your parents influence or the size of your bank account that ultimately determine whether you achieve true greatness or not god alone has that authority obviously if God is against you, no matter what effort you go to, you go to, your your failure is guaranteed. Except God build a house in Psalm 27, the psalmist said, except God build a house, whoever built it, built it in vain. But if God is actively working on your behalf, then your exaltation is absolutely assured. Getting God's help on your side is actually quite simple, but you have to do it His way. So let the mind that was in the Lord Jesus Christ be in you also this Christmas. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 5 and 6, all of you close yourself with humility towards one another. For God oppose the proud, but give grace to the humble. 
Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that he may exalt you at the proper time. God is actively opposes all those who refuse to humble themselves and God is on the one person whom you absolutely do not want to be opposed to. You don't want him to oppose you. God require you to humble yourself if you want to receive his grace. If you will humble yourself, then he will exalt you. In Luke chapter 14 and verse 11, For everyone who exalts himself will be humble, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. This verse tells us that there are two ways to become humble. Number one, it's that exalt yourself and God will humble you. Friends, this is a very bad option. Don't choose it this Christmas. Don't leave the presence of the Lord all with your chest up, with your heart full of yourselves. But secondly, humble yourself. Perhaps you will say, this makes sense and I have decided I really want to humble myself before the Lord, but I'm not sure where to begin. What are some of the practical suggestions on how I can get started and close myself with humility like the Apostle Peter said, I am glad you asked. following our seven excellent suggestions in a recent message that listed the line of how one can really humble themselves before God. Make sure that you humble yourself in prayer to God Tell him all about it. Let him know how things are going truly in your life. Second, embrace humbling experience and circumstances in your life. In Psalm 23 and verse 4, even though, even though he said the psalmist, you will encounter trials. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 6 wherein you greatly rejoice though now for a little while 